friends, welcome back to the kitchen in another day of Every Bit Counts Challenge. Sorry, you're probably gonna hear one, the sump pump, because we've had a lot of rain and it's going crazy, so I apologize if that comes on. And two, the dehydrator is running because it's that time of year and the dehydrator is always running. Today we're gonna do a little, little something different for preserving for the Every Bit Counts Challenge. I have a lot of stuff still from last year that I preserved and I mentioned this in my very first video of the Arabic Counts Challenge and for whatever reason we just didn't go through it all so I'm making a conscious effort to make sure I'm doing something with those that's what this video is today I am going to start going through a lot of the pumpkin puree that I still have frozen I found I found last year that it's not convenient to have it frozen so I would go to the canned pumpkin that I had um, bought when it was on sale and use that versus the frozen um, because it was convenience. It was much easier because I would always forget to take out the darn pumpkin in time and when I had the time to make whatever I was going to be making with it, I didn't have time for it to thaw out. Hopefully I will do better this winter because I still I have a lot. I don't even know if I'll be preserving any pumpkin again this year because I have so much still, honestly, from the last two years in my freezer that I need to get through. And it's funny because we all love pumpkin in this house. But like I said, it was the convenience. Not having that already thawed and just in a can was very difficult. Um, I wish I could do canned pumpkin safely at home. We can. You have to do it in chunks. Maybe I will try that. Maybe I will try that. Because at least then it's thawed out and it doesn't take anything to use your immersion blender to blend it up. So I might try that. But anyway... Today we are going to be doing some preserving of some pumpkin muffins to have in the freezer for a quick snack, quick breakfasts, um, whatever we need them for. I'm hoping to get a couple of batches of these into the freezer today. We're going to see. I'm also trying a new recipe, which is kind of crazy to be trying a new recipe and then freezing them all. Well, obviously we're going to eat one at least before they go into the freezer, but still. But one of the things I am going to make up, so we have going forward into the fall baking season, is pumpkin pie spice. It's nice to have it already done, and it's so easy to make yourself. It's, you know, I kind of stopped buying all those taco seasoning, uh, Mexican seasoning, what else do I have, Italian seasoning. I stopped buying all those and making your, my own because, one, it's so much cheaper, so much cheaper. And it tastes better because I'm not adding any additional things in it that they might have in the ones that you buy so we're going to make up a big batch of pumpkin spice i'm hoping we'll get a jar full i don't know we're going to see if this will fill a jar um the recipe i have um just a small little teeny mason jar spice jar we're going to see let's get going one of the reasons i'm making the pumpkin pie spice is, is i actually need it for the recipe i will be making today that's kind of getting me off my duff <laughs> and getting it made. So the first thing you're going to need is three tablespoons of ground cinnamon. You know what? I'm going to get a funnel. Hold on. I really don't want these spices all over the island. Okay. So three tablespoons of cinnamon. And I've been getting my cinnamon at... Costco because we love cinnamon here for those who've been here before you all know that like really like cinnamon and I knew I needed to get some more and we did do a quick small trip to Costco the other day and I was so excited to find their cinnamon is now the organic cinnamon same price that I was paying for this but now it's organic so I was very happy to see that <laughs> all right three tablespoons of cinnamon two teaspoons of brown ginger. There goes our sump pump. So there's one and there's two. One and a half teaspoons of nutmeg. Looks like I'll be needing more nutmeg soon too. So there's the half, and then there's the one. And one teaspoon of ground cloves. One 
one teaspoon of allspice. Oh, we got really close. Well, no, we're not done. All right, that almost filled the jar. So I'm gonna give that a shake. Mix everything up. That will more than do for me for the next, uh, for the coming baking months that are coming up. Woohoo! And it smells like fall. Okay, now that we have that done, I'm gonna put these away and we will get started on the muffins. My wish is that you don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. I'm running, and you should too, and hit that subscribe button. I know what you've been asking yourself. How can I make a difference? I'm just one person. I can make a difference, but I'm just one person. Well, my friends, I'm here to tell you that it's free, quick, and easy. Share this video on your social media and make that difference today. I'll also link the recipe for this down below. I picked it because of the amount of spices that's in this. I think it's gonna be amazing. So in this bowl, I have one and three-fourths cups of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking soda, one and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon, one and a half teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice, a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger, a half a teaspoon of salt, and then I've mixed that all together and it smells amazing. And we set that aside for a second. And then in my KitchenAid bowl, I have a half cup of sunflower oil. That's what I use. You can use any kind of oil. Um, sunflower, sunflower oil, the big jug, uh, organic, was on sale at an amazing price at Costco. And frankly, I actually love it for baking much more than olive oil. And the price of it is cheaper than olive oil right now. So that's a good thing. So yes, a half a cup of the sunflower oil, a half a cup of organic cane sugar, a third cup of packed light or dark brown sugar. Mine's homemade brown sugar, but I'd say it's more on the dark side. One and a half cups of pumpkin puree, two large eggs, and a quarter cup of milk. And we're gonna give this a whitz. So this recipe, she wants us to pour the wet into the dry. I think I have enough room in this bowl. I guess we're gonna find out. So we're gonna pour all that into there. Get out all the sugar. Fold everything together till it's just mixed. I wish we had smell a vision <laughs> This smells amazing. I'm using my cookie scoop to make sure they're all equal. I This is game changer for me <laughs> for making cupcakes and muffins. And I'm using my medium size scoop. And I decided against a double batch just till I can make sure we like these, which I think we're gonna, but it doesn't take any time to make them and I can always whip up more and goodness knows I have a lot of pumpkin. So the pumpkin I'm using is the Blue Hubbard squash, uh, the blue pumpkin. And I can't remember if I've actually used it or not. I was really excited um, to try it because it's supposed to be amazing um, in baked goods. So I'm really curious. So this says it only makes 12, so I might have made mine smaller than her because I'm going to have more than 12. So we'll get these ones going and I'll go get another muffin tray. And yes, I use liners because I don't feel like washing this. <laughs> and another tip that I have discovered, if you want your muffins and even cupcakes to puff up a bit and have that nice round top that you see at a lot of bakeries, if you bake at high heat, 425 degrees for five minutes, and then lower the temperature to whatever the temperature is for your cupcakes or muffins, they get that nice top. It's worked every time. I love that tip. Uh, I've been doing that. I found, I discovered that tip, I guess, over a year ago. It works, let me tell you. So we're gonna put these in the 425 for five minutes, and then I am going to lower the temperature to 350 and bake for roughly another 15 first batch they've cooled down um, I end up getting 
18, I think. And I think it's because I used too small a scoop, but that's okay. This is a perfect size. So Dave and I are gonna share one and try them. Okay. I'll give you the bigger half. <laughs> All right. Oh, they smell really good. So these are pumpkin muffins. It's a new recipe. Right. Those are good. Mmm. Okay. Those are really good. Soft. Hopefully they make it to the freezer. <laughs> mm. Oh, they're soft. They're not dry. Lots of flavor. Okay. Mm. I'll share the links down below for the recipe. You got to make these, and I think that blue hubbard squash, that is the pumpkin I will be preserving going forward. See you tomorrow.